Welcome to Breaking the Vow on Strong Island Radio. This is a show where we turn pain into power and find recovery after divorce, separation, and breakups. This is where we push the emotional hang-ups to the side and create a plan to reach our best possible potential. This is where the next chapter starts and how the healing begins. So let's welcome your hosts, Teresa D. and Benny, the Life Coach. And here we are back at another episode of Breaking the Vow. With me is Teresa D. and I am Benny, the Life Coach. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Mm -hmm. I I did get some paperwork done that I was supposed to do for the show. I did Uh a little planning. I did a little stuff. A little bit. A little stuff. Mm -hmm. I did a little stuff. But I have good news. You do? I have great news. Okay. Guess who I have with us today on the show? I'm so excited. Fess up when when you mess mess up up with Fran. Fran. Yay! Hey, hi, how Fran. are you? How are you doing? How's everyone doing? Very good. And yourself? Doing good. Doing good. The warm weather's coming this week. I'm very excited. 60 degrees. Yeah, Thank I'll, goodness. I, I, no kidding. I got done with the snow. It I'm, was snowing this morning in Babylon. Yeah, I saw some flurries really? upset yeah. by me. Yeah. Wow. wow. Craziness. So before we get into it, because I have some questions, you and I are, are doing a little thing on the 23rd. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yes, we are. Uh, so this, this is something I'm pretty proud of. Okay, how come you didn't tell me? You know what? I don't want to hear it from you. Fran, what are you doing <laughs> on the 23rd? Ben is coming in. He's going to be a guest speaker in my class. Excellent. Um, ben is, uh, yeah, he's a regular in my classes. And he comes in and shares his story. And everybody at the end of the classes always say when they do the evaluations, nothing about me, always about Ben. <laughs> so very good. It's always about uh, Ben, Fran. Sometimes. Always. But it's really cool. He brings so much to the class and he really does teach, uh, touch the students in, in profound ways. Actually, one of uh, the first time you came in, I was speaking to one of the students from way back from the first time you came in and uh, she was asking for you, actually. Oh, uh, look at that, Ben. So this one is a very proud moment. Because, hey, Fran and I have have a, a very meaningful history, at least to me. So I put out at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, I figured if you're not going to build your business, you always want to build your resume because the idea is to keep bu- building, right? Right. So I wrote three books. Yeah. The first book, Operation Depression, is actually the reading material that Fran's students, they look Yay! You Look listeners at that. can't see it, but right. she's holding up my book. Yeah, I know. I read it. <laughs> but it, it, listen, I'm not saying it's the easiest of reads. It's definitely intense. Yeah, it was a little bit of a tough read, and it was very intense. But guess what? Well, very impactful. Thank you. You're welcome. So I've never had a test on me. Well, that's not true. I've listen, had tests. I think I test you every day. <laughs> I've, 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 had, I've, I've had my share of tests, but... They're, this is actually going to be part of the, like their exam, and I, it was just such an honor. So I had to Go thank you. Ben. I, I'm excited. I yeah. had to thank yeah. you publicly. So now. It's a, mm-hmm, it's a test and a reflective paper. So. Nice. I, I want to read Now you're all. a test and a reflective paper. I've been a reflective other things before, but now, <laughs> now it's pretty interesting. So. We were talking before the show, and we we decided to table our questions until you got on air. Yes. I have a question for you. Actually, we have a question for you, I should say. Now, once divorce happens, right, it doesn't mean you're dead, correct? Right. I mean, life still goes on? Right. You still move on in your life. It's a a new life. It's a different life. Right. But it is your, yeah, absolutely. So- now, the problem bec- or the, the struggle, I don't want to call it a problem, or sh- the challenge. Challenge. Yes. The, the challenge, challenge when you have children and you start dating, what is the healthiest way to go about that? Like, how do you introduce someone coming into your life to your children? Like, that's a whole show in itself, right? I, I think so. It is. That's a whole show in itself. I true. know. But hopefully there's been conversation before before that. Point. Like, how do you talk to your children, especially young children, about this? 
Well, you know, it, it again, it goes back to hopefully this conversation is going on before that point, too, where, um, you know, like we talked about last time with going through the divorce, talking to the um, to the children and kind of letting them know that, you know, you are, in, you know, um, have someone that you, you like and you want them to, and let them be a part of that as well, because if if it's serious, obviously it's going to impact the kids as well. So right. you want them to feel like they not necessarily have a say, but they are, you know, the final say, but that, that they're part of this journey with you and to leave it open for them to right. So make them about. feel included in the process. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Like don't shut them out and not tell them anything. And then all of a sudden bring somebody in. Right. Can you imagine? All no, sudden, I can't imagine mommy, that. Here's your new daddy. That's right. Your dad. Exactly. That That's what you don't want close. to happen. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, I went through it. I don't know. I don't remember how I posed the, the topic. I don't know how I, how I approached it. Um, I think I said, you know, I, daddy likes somebody mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I think you're going to like her too. I'd love for you to meet her. Yeah. But now at the time I was going, I was, I was going through so many ups and downs. I didn't necessarily, I didn't know really how to date properly because dating itself is a very <sighs> weird thing. I'm yeah. Not, that's a whole other show. Yeah. I'm not a good dater. <laughs> Me neither. That's a couple, that's a couple of shows. Yeah. yeah that's at least I, a couple I, I, shows. I'm, I'm not a good dater. I don't know. Like. I have a million insecurities, a million different thoughts. But everyone does, Don't not they? just you. Yeah. So the the thing is, when you find someone that you connect with, it's exciting, right? Mm-hmm. So the parents getting excited, and at the same time, you want to honor your child, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you want to keep living. Right. There's so many things that happen. So how how would you suggest somebody approaches that conversation? With a child, well, kind of like I mean, I like the way you did it, Ben. <clears throat> you know that you like someone, and you would like for them to meet them and have them. You know, sometimes maybe your child would not at that moment would want to meet them and kind of go with the process. But you know, you don't hide it either because it is part of who you are, right? And then right. you're keeping secrets, so then you're modeling keeping right. Secrets. You're modeling keeping secrets, and that's not good, right? So you know. And, you know, I wouldn't, you know, you do like a little bit at a time. Let's go for some ice cream or not pandemic, but, um, Mm -hmm. you know, little things and let them get to know each other as well. Because, you know, when we come together, it's people, individual people coming together, whether in a relationship, any type of relationship. So the children need to, to form a relationship with that other person. Right. And it's going to be their relationship. It's not the child's relationship through the parent with that person. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. does. So it's including them and allowing them to have their voice and that, you know, they may have um, concerns or express some, like, I don't want Mm -hmm. you to be dating or it feels different and to have the conversation. It makes us, when you know, we get uncomfortable with this, right? And then it becomes uncomfortable for the child. Right. We got to be open to hearing what they have to say and just kind of process it because their feelings, feelings are not right or wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. They They're your feelings. Right. They and everybody just wants to feel heard. Right. Right. So we don't want to cut them off and we don't want to get defensive. Right. Because right. then we just shut everything down. I think also right. it's very important to point out, like you want to keep the conversations age appropriate. Absolutely. I Absolutely. Had, I had a client. Absolutely. Who, who um, was dealing with different issues uh, aside from divorce. And again, I don't treat or diagnose. My job as a life coach is to get my clients from point A to point B. I believe in empowerment and encouragement because shame-based ideas absolutely, and, and fear-based thinking does not help promote recovery. So, absolutely. Shame and blame are, are just yeah. Really- yeah, it's it's such it's just, it's mm-hmm. just it's just that uh, it's a vicious circle that goes round and round. It's emotional quicksand. And yeah. the harder you try to get out of it, you just sink deeper. Right. So I but, I but think about it. We all you know we all we all don't like that to be shamed or blamed. You know what right. I mean? So and so when you do it, it to it, yourself, right? When you do it right. to yourself, it just gets worse. I, my I I listened to my client. Um, I was on the phone, and I heard him explaining things 
to his son who had special needs and 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 deserves a little different attention mm-hmm. when you, you speak to him so yeah, I, I, know your audience right so i asked do you yeah. think, do you think know he your understood audience. or did it sound like a bunch of big words right cuz and sometimes it's 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 so important in any relationship but especially with kids to kind of have them feed back to you what they understood what you said too so that you're understanding where they're at right because you know because they could hear kids, every third word mm-hmm. right they're well, kids well so do we we right. hear about every third word too right, right. yeah we, we hear what we want to hear so do yeah kids. exactly we all come out of this thing called it's uh, cognitive biases we all have our uh, experience or our uh, background so we you know we talk a lot in concepts Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. We use words like respect, uh, trust, um, stability. But what does that mean? Because what it means for me might be totally different than what it means for you. Exactly. Ben. So we have to break it down to concrete things like something that we can uh, understand and and understand meaning like concrete. But have when you're talking to anybody, but especially children. And like you said, Ben, it is so so important to be age appropriate with kids Yeah, that have them say back, okay, what did you understand from that? Or what, you know, uh, what did, uh, what did you get from that and have right. them so that if there is, cause then that's what causes a lot of confusion and frustration. Right. When we're coming from two different perspectives. Right. I think something that people forget is feedback is your friend. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it is an enemy. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I have to work with. Also, sometimes when I get feedback, I'm like, oh, instant criticism is obviously a problem. (laughs) It's not instant criticism, though. It's constructive. It's constructive. What happens is we have these, you know, these built in subconscious programs, these, these biases that we believed for so long. And in order to reach a healthier climate for yourself, you have to mm-hmm. learn how to accept feedback and yes. actually grow from that. Right. And sometimes parents have that, well, I'm the parent, you're the child, I'm telling you. Listen, I'm a, right. I, I've said that. <laughs> I, I mean, I've said, I think uh, sometimes said it's, that. it's be, because I'm your mother. Like, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I've done that. You know, <laughs> guilty. Right. right. I mean, it's frustration. It's the, frustration. Right. The one thing, and we're going to go to gr- break in a minute, the one thing I, I learned is, when I was a kid, I remember my my old man, my father used to tell me, what do you know? You're just a kid. And mm-hmm. I remember thinking, well, it's been a long time. You're, you're old. You don't know what it's like to be a kid. I remember that alienation. Mm-hmm. So what we want to do mm-hmm. is remove any sort of uh, language or words that's right. going to alienate each other. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. All right. So Absolutely. real quick, we're going to pay the bills and go to break. And we're going to come right back and talk about talking with our children. Yay. Yay. All right, so this is what you're going to do. I had a flat tire. Do you know who I called? You called Tommy. I did at 631 Tire and Wheel, 666 West Hoffman Avenue in Lindenhurst, New York, 11757. Or you can go to 631tire.com, 631-412-5165 and ask for Tommy. Tell him Teresa sent you. Or Benny. I'm still here, but he, he helped me out and I know he'll help you out. Well, stop hitting potholes. Smart move. Went to buy a bunch of patio furniture, went to the guy's house, got destroyed by the weather. I asked him, I go, why didn't you cover this? He says, I didn't know I could. I didn't know how to do that. I said, I got a whole idea for you, buddy. Everything will be sold if you just take care of your equipment. He says, how do I cover it? Guess who I told him to call? Wrap America. Absolutely. They have a reusable zipper wrap, completely covers RVs, wave runners, patio equipment. It's it's great. If you go to wrap-america.com, Ask for Tommy if you call 516-830-0040. So, we're not getting out of here on time? No, we're not. Is that and my... That, yeah, it's all your, all your fault. It is my fault. All right, so then I want lunch. Yes. Does that mean I have to buy lunch? Yes. If I'm buying lunch, I want Giovanni's Pizza. You got it. All right, so I'm going to call 631-669-9507. They're at 1009 Little East Neck Road in West Babylon, New York, 11704. And I am getting a chicken parm. I know your father likes that. Oh, my father loves his chicken parm. I love everything they make. Gio, I'm getting fat and it's your fault, but I love every minute of it. (laughs) Hey, 
Ben, did you know 65% of people have curly hair? And the biggest problem that holds them back from embracing their curl is frizz. Frizz? Yes. I do know about frizz. Curl Evolution, located at 233 East Main Street in Babylon Village, is solving that problem. Good. They're Long Island's top curly salon. They specialize in cuts and colors, especially for curly hair. I'll tell you, if you have a bad hair day, that's who you go to. Yes, you do. They cut curls differently as well, totally different than straight hair. It's done dry. Dry? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Teach me more. Yeah. It's because of their individual curl pattern. Oh. They have over 2,500 five-star reviews, so you can check them out at curlevolution.com. They're located at 233 East Main Street in Babylon, 631-422-4200. I want my hair to be curly just so I can go. Yes. I'm going. <laughs> Listen, if you need a lawyer, I'm going to tell you what to do. A lot of this show is about divorce, taking the proper steps to get divorced. If you're going to do that, you want you want the right attorney. The right attorney is, half, is more than half the battle, if you ask me. Yes. So what is. I would do, I think you know who I'm going to tell people to call. Yes. Who am I going to tell them to call? Gene Mercurio. Absolutely. 57 West Main Street, Suite 130, Babylon. What's that number again? It's 631-543-0032. Gene is a friend and a warrior of the show. Give her a call. All right, and we're back. And Fran... Fess up when you mess up Fran. Fess up. When mess you mess up, when up you with mess Fred, up. so <laughs> Fred, you do know you 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 are a family to the show. Oh right? yeah, and you already have the hashtag. Fess up when you mess up Fred. I love it. And you do there know go. that you're going to be on all the time now. Yeah. Right? Just my honor and privilege and pleasure. I look forward to it. I really do. No, well, you know what? It's it's really first off, we do need a professional perspective, but what you offer is a little different. Right. It's not just a pro- professional perspective. You're very real. Right. And you understand. Yeah, you've lived it. You know. Right. And the way you talk to people is so incredibly gentle. But yet, I've run jail programs, and I'm letting you know right now, I would walk into any jail program with a friend in a heartbeat. <laughs> well, hey, let's do it. Let's do it. I, I, I've been trying. I've been trying. I, I, did, you, um, did you get vaccinated, just out of curiosity? Not yet. I'm. Uh, I signed up, so I'm waiting to hear. All right, so I I did get the vaccine, by the way. Mm. How'd that go? Um. So the first one, uh, I got the Moderna shot on First Day Avenue in the city, um, and they told me that they weren't going to do it. I said, No, no, I, I fit the criteria because uh, I'm a healthcare professional. And they said, How old are you? And I said, Forty eight. They're like, Yeah, you're too young. I was like, I, What? Yeah, I said, No, no, I I'm feel, not. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I can deal with being too young, no problem. So I go, I go. No, they. I, I filled out this whole paperwork. They told me to come down. The guy goes, listen, I'm not going to tell you they're going to turn you around. I'm just going to tell you how to get to the to the office, where they're going to tell you to turn around. Whoa, so really? I'm like, I'm like, all right, buddy, thanks, man. Like, all right. So moral of the story is, don't go to First Avenue. I'm not saying your, the name. For your vaccination I, I'm not shot. saying the name of the hospital. <laughs> I will say where it's located on First Avenue on 97th that I'll never go there, even with a gunshot Oh, and now neither will I. No. Oh, God. But uh, they were nice to me. So I go down, and uh, the lady's like, why are you here? And I I told her, and she was very kind to me. Meanwhile, this guy comes in, and he was just not friendly. He didn't have a mask on, and he was just unkempt and really slovenly, and and he was drrooling all over the place. I'm like, guy, don't stand next to me. Right, because you, 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 everyone's afraid now. Yeah, right. sure. So I got I got my first shot. I was literally in and out within an hour. The second time I went back, the only the only side effect I had was a sore arm. It felt like how it was yeah. I remember you telling me that. Yeah, so it was like it how was my brother used arm. to hit me yeah. in my arm, and I'd have <laughs> like a dead arm for like three days. But <laughs> the second one, I did feel a little achy. Was I too complaining? Yes. I was. You were a total baby. <laughs> was a, we're all baby. Total baby. I, I am. I, I, get the I, wambulance. Get the wambulance. I have. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I got the second one. But now, I, I mean, I feel okay. 
And 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 these are these are concerns because so again, we're talking about having having kids, right? And mm-hmm. we're talking about our children being a product of divorce. And now let's talk about our surroundings. Let's talk about what the what's going on now. Kids are kids are coming home because someone had someone had COVID. Yeah, now you know, they're quarantined. They're quarantined. How yeah. is that affecting visitation? Oh, it's got to be affecting it big time. Right. So then, so Fran, how do you address that and the mood of the child? Because as it is, they're going from one home to the other, back and forth. Yeah. And now they got to hear where well, you can't see daddy because of right right this. How do we address that conversation without it being the child becoming a chess piece? Well, I mean, we're dealing with a pandemic, which is like something totally that we haven't really dealt with. Right. Unprecedented. Right. Right. So it has its impact on everyone. And I mean, I think everyone on this planet pretty much has heard about COVID and the kids absolutely know it because of school. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, no more snow days this year. Right. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Um, You didn't need them anyway. Yeah, well, yeah. Everybody I mean, I was home listen. most of the time. Right, right. So they, they're totally aware of it. So their structure has been up, uplifted anyway. Um, but just keeping it real about what the issue really is. It's the pandemic and, you know, everybody has to kind of do this and make sure that there is, um, you know, not only the safety protocols, but have other things where you, we're you're talking through FaceTime or, or Zoom or something, or if you can outside with the masks and stuff like that and distance and, but try to keep it as normal as possible. However, within reason, because of the pandemic and, you know, you bring up a good point too, because, you know, the kids are definitely being affected by the pandemic in multiple ways. And, you know, it's, and as parents, I think it's difficult nowadays because if you're working, living at home and then doing schoolwork with kids and there's a lot of different roles going on and, you know, we're all in this together and and in the same place. And just by that alone will cause some frustrations, but, you know, having conversations just about COVID, what they understand again, Ben, absolutely age appropriate. Yeah. And, you know, keep it on that. And that's not necessarily being having the child as a pawn because there is a reality to it. Right. You know, there is a reality to this. I think one thing I'm noticing, and and there's someone that I was working with trying to um, just create a different strategy for relationships with his two children and, you know, trying to create some sort of synergy between um, I guess the ex-wife which mm-hmm. is such a weird way to say, my, as well as my ex-wife or my ex. Yeah. We become accustomed to say that, but there's yeah. an energy behind that word. So mm-hmm. we're trying mm-hmm. to come up with a different strategy. So rather to, to kind of get rid of those words, because this way we don't take on the energy behind that. Right. right. So right. the conversation we had was my son, who I believe he is 16, watches the news way too much. He, so he, he was afraid to leave the house. Right. He's yeah. afraid to be around yeah. anybody. Yeah. He's afraid to go to mommy's house, afraid to go to daddy's house. He's afraid to go back and forth. He doesn't want to get COVID. I mean, the, the media isn't always a friend. No. I, no, I, I, no, not at all. No. I, I don't and think again, anyone would disagree you know, there's with so that. so much stuff. We have instantaneous stuff. Yeah. So people are getting into it and, you know, Kids are not going to like look and, oh, let me see if this is really true or not. They're just being bombarded with all this. Yeah. I also, I also have a friend who has children and they're younger. They're about 10 and 11. And on the, the father's side, they don't believe in mask wearing. Mm. So when they're at daddy's house, they don't have to wear a mask. They don't wear a mask anywhere. And then when they go back to mom's house, mom follows all the protocols. So these kids are in the middle, completely confused. Oh. Okay, what am I supposed to be doing? Because mm-hmm. in on one end, they're, I don't have to wear a mask. I never wear a mask at daddy's house. And then they get back to mom's house and they're like, oh, I got to put this mask on, but I don't have to when I'm with dad. That becomes a mm-hmm. challenge. Yeah. And it becomes, so the one of the reasons, and, and Teresa and I decided to get into this show, is 
there were mistakes that I that I will say I made. So I fess up where I messed up. And <laughs> always I, fess up when you mess up. I love that. Yeah, always, it's it's always. written on the wall. Yes. So we we read that every time. So now, <laughs> the one thing I learned is you know the the last thing I want to do is put my child or pit my child between me and my, uh, my child's mother. Because when you do that, then all of a sudden the question of loyalty is going to come. Right. Absolutely. It opens a, up a whole other can of worms. You don't need a winner or a loser when everyone can win. Right. And Absolutely. When, when when people do that, so I remember um, – I was doing some stuff with my daughter with her hair, and I was doing, and, and I had this special brush. I never, I never, I never brushed a, cure, a girl's hair before, mm-hmm. right? Because dads it, traditionally don't, right? So I had, I had a problem, right? And right. I remember, I remember, you know, I'm like, I could do this, and I, I didn't realize in, in my situation that I was putting my will out there because. It was about me and my ideas of rejection, mm-hmm. and I wanted, I needed the validation of being the dad, and I needed to be in charge. And you're going to do what I say. You're not going right. to reject me. And it became about me. So mm-hmm. when it comes to things like COVID or mask wearing or anything, if if we put it, if we put the child in the middle, what does that do to the child? Well, how does that affect the child's spirit? emotional and mental state they're torn they have to be right Fran they are torn and you you, like you said before you don't want them to question you know have these loyalties um and have that pull and then to kind of split and like oh you know I I I got to do this here got to do that there I don't know what to do and then they start questioning themselves as well so what you know in any in any communication and you know we forget that children are they're not adults but they are human beings and we have to communicate to them like we would anybody else and keep the focus like like you said ben it's so easy for us to feel um uh rejected or attacked or whatever you know we're trying to do to keep the relation the, the communication very simple i feel i think own it i you know i think this is because and explain why and you're not necessarily tearing down the other parent you, right. you get what i'm saying yeah right so it's not like say you're not giving the message by the words we use are so important not only to what we communicate to other people but what we communicate to ourselves too, right right i think so what i learned if we keep it i and you own it you're not put you know you're you're taking less of that putting the child in in, in that uh, position of feeling in the middle I right. think what I learned, and I learned late in my game, because when you learn, you know, listen, you, at least you learned. What I learned late in the game is ego is not always your friend. No. Pride never. is not always your friend. It's one thing in having pride in your work. It's another thing. It's one thing to say, hey, you know, I really want to do a good job. I want to be the best me possible. It's one thing to have pride in yourself, but there's a different pride. Where you're yeah. going to listen to me and I'm going to be validated and you're not going right. to talk to me that way. And what happened with me in my situation, and I don't speak for anyone else, is I allowed my pride and my ego to get in the way. And that's really, these are the things that really changed um, the way I looked at parenting, the way I looked at myself. It humbled me. And we're you gonna be, learned from it. Uh, and a lot of that comes a lot of that comes down think about it keep it simple KIS there's another thing keep it simple always keep it simple a lot of times these types of feelings come about because we feel insecure right we don't know what to do yeah insecurity insecure we're gonna go to break yes insecurity destroys relationships so let's pay some bills yes take a quick break and we'll be right back in five All right, so this is what you're going to do. I had a flat tire. Do you know who I called? You called Tommy. I did at 631 Tire and Wheel, 666 West Hoffman Avenue in Lindenhurst, New York, 11757. Or you can go to 631tire.com, 631-412-5165, and ask for Tommy. Tell him Teresa sent you. Or Benny. I'm still here, but he, he helped me out, and I know he'll help you out. Well, stop hitting potholes. 
Smart move. Went to buy a bunch of patio furniture. Went to the guy's house. Got destroyed by the weather. I asked him, I go, why didn't you cover this? He says, I didn't know I could. I didn't know how to do that. I said, oh, I got a whole idea for you, buddy. Can, everything will be sold if you just take care of your equipment. He says, how do I cover it? Guess what I told him to call? Wrap America. Absolutely. They have a reusable zipper wrap. Completely covers RVs, wave runners, fa- patio equipment. It's, it's great. If you go to wrap-america.com, Ask for Tommy if you call 516-830-0040. So, we're not getting out of here on time? No, we're not. Is that and my... That, yeah, it's all your, all your fault. It is my fault. All right, so then I want lunch. Yes. Does that mean I have to buy lunch? Yes. If I'm buying lunch, I want Giovanni's Pizza. You got it. All right, so I'm going to call 631-669-9507. They're at 1009 Little East Neck Road in West Babylon, New York, 11704. And I am getting a chicken parm. I know your father likes that. Oh, my father loves his chicken parm. I love everything they make. Jill, I'm getting fat, and you, it's your fault, but I love every minute of it. <laughs> hey, Ben, did you know 65% of people have curly hair? And the biggest problem that holds them back from embracing their curl is frizz. Frizz. Yes. I do know about Frizz. Curl Evolution, located at 233 East Main Street in Babylon Village, is solving that problem. Good. They're Long Island's top curly salon. They specialize in cuts and colors, especially for curly hair. I'll tell you, if you have a bad hair day, that's who you go to. Yes, you do. They cut curls differently as well, totally different than straight hair. It's done dry. Dry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Teach me more. Yeah. It's because of their individual curl pattern. Oh. They have over 2,500 five-star reviews, so you can check them out at curlevolution.com. They're located at 233 East Main Street in Babylon, 631-422-4200. I want my hair to be curly just so I can go. Yes. I'm going. <laughs> Listen. If you need a lawyer, I'm going to tell you what to do. A lot of this show is about divorce, taking the proper steps to get divorced. If you're going to do that, you want you want the right attorney. The right attorney is half is more than half the battle, if you ask me. Yes. So what is. I would do, I think you know who I'm going to tell people to call. Yes. Who am I going to tell them to call? Gene Mercurio. Absolutely. 57 West Main Street, Suite 130, Babylon. What's that number again? It's 631-543-0032. Gene is a friend and a warrior of the show. Give her a call. All right, we're back. Now, I know Teresa knows this story. Fran, I don't know if you know the story. I might have used it in one of my presentations with you. Okay. I, th- I think what happened is I realized, I remember one time I was arguing with, um, well, she was my wife at the time, but my, my, my child's mother. And I remember looking at my daughter and she watched us. And I remember thinking, she's going to think this is normal. Right. So at some point, she's going to mirror this yes. in her adult life. Yes. Absolutely. How many times have we set, seen our parents behave a certain uh. way? See, I'm never doing that when I get older. I, I'm, of course. Right. Yes. I find myself doing doing and saying things my father said. Yes. That I wish I never did. Yes. So, on our last ditch effort to save the marriage, it was a decision that we were going to go to Disney. Now, when you associate Disney with it's the something, happiest place on earth, right? isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? It's the happiest place in the world. Freaking Disneyland. <laughs> How can you be sad at Disney? You can't. I found the way. You did. Uh, oh, sure, I do. you yeah. know. Yes. So, okay. So, we, we, we booked this trip, and then her mother decides to invite another couple with their child Ugh. as a distraction. Oh, as it is, my daughter was two at the time. Disney oh. with a two-year-old. Before all those That's little line passes, yeah, 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 that was rough. She chose a fan, a couple that like they come to the house every once in a while. I didn't like them. Mm. I'm thinking to myself, why would you pick them? But did she know you didn't like them? Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Okay. I'm pretty vocal. Okay. 
back then, I, I, I've learned to be healthier. I am a certified professional life coach. I have grown. Again, with your credentials. I have to say that because I am on, we know life. that. But I, I, the reason why I am who I am now is because I was a lunatic for most of my life. <laughs> so, so okay, fine. We bring this this couple with us. The, the hotel was wrong. Everything was wrong. There was arguments. It was such a cold. In the happiest place on earth. Ever. And we were and we were arguing. We, so there was two beds. I slept on one. She slept on the other. I mean, it was it beats the pillow wall, but it was right. it, it was it was it was terrible. So then, we at one point I had to go back to the room and I just sat there by myself. I remember thinking like, this is I'm in Disney, and I, the, every time I went to Disney before, I remember thinking it, it's just magical atmosphere. Yes, the right. one thing that was magical is it's a small world, and I watched I my love, daughter. It's my favorite ride, isn't it? Yes. Oh, my daughter was so excited, and I got choked up because you know I know I'm trying to be tough, but I'm not a tough guy when it came to that. Then, right. then she saw Goofy, and she walks up to Goofy and just just sits down right in front oh, of him and looks oh. at him like he's like there for her. And that was cool. So then the last day in Disney, the other couple, fortunately, decides to go elsewhere. And where where, where Mickey lives. So Mm -hmm. I never knew. I know Mickey and Minnie, they're together. Maybe the reason why they never got divorced is because they don't live in the same house. Right. (laughs) I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. No. So And then uh, Donald and Daisy? Yep. They don't live in the same house either. Yep. Here's here. something that I feel a little weird about. Goofy's got his own house. Pluto, not so much. Pluto's got to hang out with Mickey, right? Yeah. That, that never well, made Pluto sense. has a dog house. Pluto, eh, Pluto, Pluto, Goofy's a dog. What's Pluto? A dog. How come? We're going to put that to the side. We're going to put that to the side. I felt that was a little wrong. Right. Then like, we wait online to take a picture with Minnie, Mickey, and Goofy. And that line was almost an hour. Yeah. It had to be an hour, an hour and a half. Oh, my God. I know. With a two-year-old. Yeah. Oh, my but God. You know what? But it, you're still in Disney. You're it, still. What, the, the finally, all the all the heaviness, and I, what, we weren't fighting, and we were getting along. The other couple was long gone. Thank God. And then, <laughs> so then, they take the pictures, and then we're excited, and this guy's doing all the different Disney character voices. And then he goes like this, "Uh uh-oh. I'm like, guy, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been here for two weeks. I've had a lot of uh uh-ohs. Today, there's no more uh (laughs) uh-ohs. What are you uh uh-ohing about? He says, I can't seem to find your picture. (gasps) I mean, I go, I've been waiting online for an hour now. You can't find the pictures? He goes, I go, listen, I had a bad, he goes, listen, I don't, this is Disney. We make dreams come true here. I said to myself, okay, how <laughs> are you going to make this one come true? He goes, what if I put you in front of the, the princess line? That was that was even longer. Yes, it the, always the, is. The princess line is huge, yes. right? So I said, she doesn't really know the princesses. She knows Minnie, Mickey, Goofy, Winnie the Pooh, and Tigger too. Like, that's all she knows. He goes, I'll put you in front of all three lines. You're going to cut all three lines. I says to myself, good. So we go in this back, and they have this beautiful room in the back. They have this Black rub, these walls. These it's, the black, are, it's the back aisles. Yeah. Of oh my God. They yeah. have these these paintings on the wall that are just breathtaking of all these different Disney characters, and they had this velvet rope on gold stanchions, and I felt like the big Ginzaloon. I felt like I was the big player. I was like, look at this, look at this, look right. how I'm getting treated at the front of the line. So my <laughs> daughter's there, uh, uh, her mother's there, and, and a woman comes up behind me. And she was with a friend and a young, a small boy. And I asked, I go, did they mess up on your pictures too? And she looked at me funny because she didn't understand why I said that. She goes, no, why? No, why? I said, they messed up on our pictures. So they said we cut the line. And she says, no, we don't We don't wait on lines anywhere. So I'm a typical New Yorker, so I, I, I joke a lot. And I go, I should have hung out with you because we've been waiting on lines all two weeks. And then she says, no, 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 we don't wait on lines anywhere. And I go, how come? And she pointed to her, her son, who was probably the most beautiful little boy that I ever laid eyes on. Mm. And, she, wish. Um, and she told me it was his dream wish. Oh, mm-hmm. from the Make-A-Wish. To, to come to dinner. Yeah. So here's this little boy yeah. who might not live. 
Right. And I'm complaining in the happiest place in the world. So then I went inside. I I, I, I turned away because I didn't want nobody to see me crying. I go inside, and then I, I we get the pictures taken, and I looked at the guy who helped us, and I, I literally, like, pulled him over the top of the counter. I go, come here. And I pointed to the little kid. I go, him. And he looked at me. He goes, yeah. Yeah. After that, it was very clear to me. I had to real. I had to put myself in check. Right. You know, my daughter's right. not a pawn. Right. I had. I have no right to treat her that way. I had no right to treat people half the way I did. And, and I'm looking around, and this little boy just wanted to see the Disney princesses. He wanted, and and I'm complaining. And mm-hmm. after that, I realized I don't want my child to see what I'm doing. What I'm doing, fessing up when I mess up. Right. What I'm doing. And I don't want her to see that as normal. Right. 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 And I think it's important to showcase these ideas because Mm -hmm. we get so caught up in ourselves and then it becomes about us. Right. Exactly. And it's it's not about us. No, it isn't. So so how do we how do we change that? How do we learn to, to remove ourselves from the argument? How do we dismantle our attitude and, and, and disarm the argument and make it about the child? Because we just simply got to just realize that we are not the center of things, right? We are not. We think we are, but we're not. Well, I do. Of- I definitely yeah. think well, I am the center of things. You know, the world yes, is bigger you do. than us, right? <laughs> and when it comes to kids, they are sponges. You're, you know, we are teaching our children not through necessarily what we say, but what we do, how we make them feel, right? That's what everybody takes away. We can have conversations for hours, Ben, and I might not remember everything you say, but I'm going to remember how you made me feel. Right. So that's me as an adult, as yes. a child, that is even a hundredfold. There is this great little video clip called Children See, Children Do, and it's amazing because they just sponges. And these are the tapes that we're starting to make for little ones who then grow up and have these tapes in the back of their head of the messages that they have received over and over. And like you said before, it becomes normal. Right. And this is my reality. This is the way I do. This is the way we do. And, you know, what I deal with a lot with adults, actually, Mm -hmm. is trying to undo those childhood tapes that they've heard from the significant people in their lives when they were younger. Right. Which is why we end up mirroring the things that we say. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, it's about, you had that moment, that epiphany, which was like, oh my God. Wow. So that is great. And then you were able to kind of undo it. You fessed up to yourself and, you know, and it's okay. I think we as adults feel that we can't tell people who are younger or our children that we made a mistake. Mistakes, we're all going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Right. We all are going to make mistakes. And as a matter and of if fact, we, if you fess up when you mess up and say, hey, you know, I made a mistake. I'm sorry about that. You can actually teach the lesson of how mistakes are okay. Right. And yes. you can move and on it from it. It removes the stigma of, oh, oh, my God, I made a mistake. Yeah. It shouldn't be that way. Absolutely. And we incorporate that. And as we get older, we're going, you know, we can't make a mistake. We got to be number one. We got to do right. But we're ta- we're teaching that we're teaching our kids that like, it's OK. We're human. We You are going to make mistakes. We want you to make mistakes, actually. You know, you the learn. little ones, right. not the big ones. You know, we're trying to avoid the big ones. Right. But, you know, but we're also you're you're just simply by saying I made a mistake. And you're right. We get in our own way. It's our pride. It's our insecurity because we're afraid we're going to look less than less than what? Right. Being a human exactly. Being. So a lot of what what I what I've learned for myself and what we talk about, especially when we do presentations is, you know, that idea of being unwanted, unliked, unwelcomed, uh, uninvited, Mm -hmm. unincluded, all of those uns, you know, it's all internal rejection. And where does that come from? It comes from lessons we learned. It comes from Mm a subconscious programming, our our trained biases, our our subconscious programming, which I couldn't get that out of my mouth. So Mm -hmm. uh, trained (laughs) biases, trained behaviors, trained responses. We we spend so much time. You're not a golden retriever. Trained, trained, trained. But essentially we really are. So think about about 
when you go to bed, where you put things, you put, you're, you're training yourself to keep your life simple. All the brain wants is ease and peace and, and, and have everything mm-hmm. be simple. Mm. So what happens, think about this, where, when you go to sleep at night, everyone knows where they put their cell phone. Everybody knows where they put their keys. Yes. The reason why you train yourself this way is so you have an easier routine because everyone has this fear of laws, fear of inadequacy, fear of that I won't make things right or I can't be right, right or I'll be inefficient, insufficient, or any of those. So what happens is the Part of the reason why most people argue is because they're afraid to be wrong. But if mm-hmm. we if we learn how to remain to be teachable, yes. then then we can learn to be healthier and we can create a better synergy. All right. So before we go to break, I, I before we go to break, I want everyone to think about the word boundaries and how to set healthy boundaries. In all relationships, healthy not just boundaries. Healthy boundaries. Healthy. There, there is yeah. a difference. So let's you go are. pay some bills, run a few commercials, and I'll see you guys in a few. All right. So this is what you're gonna do. I had a flat tire. Do you know who I called? You called Tommy. I did at six three one tire and wheel six 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 West Hoffman Avenue in Lindenhurst, New York one one seven. Five seven, or you can go to six three one tire dot com, six three one four one two five one six five, and ask for Tommy. Tell him Teresa sent you. Or Benny, I'm still here, but he he helped me out, and I know he'll help you. Well, out. stop hitting potholes. Smart move. Went to buy a bunch of patio furniture. Went to the guy's house. Got destroyed by the weather. I asked him, I go, why didn't you cover this? He says, I didn't know I could. I didn't know how to do that. I said, I got a whole idea for you, buddy. Everything will be sold if you just take care of your equipment. He says, how do I cover it? Guess who I told him to call? Wrap America. Absolutely. They have a reusable zipper wrap, completely covers RVs, wave runners, patio equipment. It's it's great. If you go to wrap-america.com, ask for Tommy if you call 516-830-0040. So, we're not getting out of here on time? No, we're not. Is that and my... That, yeah, it's all your, all your fault. It is my fault. All right, so then I want lunch. Yes. Does that mean I have to buy lunch? Yes. If I'm buying lunch, I want Giovanni's Pizza. You got it. All right, so I'm going to call 631-669-9507. They're at 1009 Little East Neck Road in West Babylon, New York, 11704. And I am getting a chicken parm. I know your father likes that. Oh, my father loves his chicken parm. I love everything they make. Jill. I'm getting fat, and it's your fault, but I love every minute of it. (laughs) Hey, Ben, did you know 65% of people have curly hair? And the biggest problem that holds them back from embracing their curl is frizz. Frizz? Yes. I do know about frizz. Curl Evolution, located at 233 East Main Street in Babylon Village, is solving that problem. Good. They're Long Island's top curly salon. They specialize in cuts and colors, especially for curly hair. I'll tell you, if you have a bad hair day, that's who you go to. Yes, you do. They cut curls differently as well, totally different than straight hair. It's done dry. Dry? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Teach me more. Yeah. It's because of their individual curl pattern. Oh. They have over 2,500 five-star reviews, so you can check them out at curlevolution.com. They're located at 233 East Main Street in Babylon, 631-422-4200. I want my hair to be curly just so I can go. Yes. I'm going. (laughs) Listen, if you need a lawyer, I'm going to tell you what to do. A lot of this show is about divorce, taking the proper steps to get divorced. If you're going to do that, you want want the right attorney. The right attorney is is more than half the battle, if you ask me. Yes. So what I would do, I think you know who I'm going to tell people to call. Yes. Who am I going to tell them to call? Gene Mercurio. Absolutely. 57 West Main Street, Suite 130, Babylon. What's that number again? It's 631-543-0032. Gene is a friend and a warrior of the show. Give her a call. And we're back. All right. So here's the question. Fran, ready? Uh Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh. We were talking about boundaries. So here's the question about boundaries. Hey, what are boundaries? What are rigid boundaries? And what happens when a boundary is crossed? I think that's interesting for people to think about. Mm. 
Yeah, it is. I mean, sometimes we, you know, boundaries are just like kind of what we're kind of willing to do, not willing to do self-care versus what's going to be unhealthy for me, what's going to be healthy. Um, and, you know, setting appropriate boundaries is not excluding people. It's just, you know, not have not being able to say yes all the time that we have to take care of ourselves. You know, selfish has a negative connotation. Oh, you're so selfish. And we always think, oh, that's a negative thing. But being selfish has a positive side to it, too. We're taking care of ourselves, maintaining our healthiness. And sometimes we need not to do things or take a break or, um, you know, uh, tap out and just take care of ourselves. So sometimes people think, okay, I'm going to do boundaries. And they set up all these, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. You can't come in. I have to protect myself. No vulnerability. That's not healthy either. Because That's you're, rigid, you're not, right, yeah. That's very rigid. And you're missing positive experiences. You're missing growth. You're missing, you know, just that interaction, that connectedness with people. Um, and so then uh, that's rigid. And then another flip side is just being, oh, let me take care of everyone. Let me do everything. And that's on the flip side where it's unhealthy. Well, it's so too loose. Balance. Right. Right. You have to have a balance. And sometimes we ebb and flow in that balance. I know I do. Um, but, you know, it's about making sure that you are taking care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically. Yeah, which so is really hard to do when you have children because you're never you thinking about you. You're mm. always thinking about them. Right. But if you're not taking care of yourself as a parent, yes, you're not going to be that. able to take care of your kids. I completely agree. It just And it is so hard. Right. It is so hard. Right. It's just but a even, really hard thing to do. But even five minutes. Yes. You know, I think when we think taking care of ourselves is that we got to take a whole day. We got to take an afternoon. Sometimes it's just that five minutes or 10 minutes that we're just re-energizing. You can't drive a car endlessly in one tank of gas, can you? No, right. No. no. And, and, we can't drive ourselves with with no reboot. Right. And you know, in the previous segment we were talking about you know our, this training that we get and are mm -hmm. we a golden retriever? So you're trained about your boundaries also. So you're taught what a yes. mom is. You're right. taught what a dad is. You're taught what a Absolutely. sister, a brother, aunt, uncle. You're taught about these things. So everyone has these roles. And now what happens is these roles come with a definition. Now there's mm -hmm. a connotation and the denotation. So the denotation is what the actual word means. Then the connotation is what is a secondary meaning of what the word means right. to me. So now when someone says dad, this is what dad means to them as well as the, the denotation of what the actual word. So now what happens is when a dad or a mom or, or a sister or a brother crosses boundary in a way of either abusive or, or mm -hmm. neglectfulness, being neglectful or in whichever way, what happens is when you cross these boundaries, it trains the child. And sometimes mm -hmm. once you cross a boundary, they can't be uncrossed. Mm-hmm. They can't be, un you can't undo that. So the mm -hmm. damage that it leads behind is, 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 is impactful and it could be lifelong. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I, I, you, you know, you, you hear about these kids, um, sadly at, at, at a young preteen suicide, you know, the numbers aren't going down, they're going up. Right. Right? Teenage suicide going up. So I think it's, I, I mean, overdoses, I, I read something, um, is like a hundred up a hundred and nineteen percent. I don't necessarily dig statistics because right. I don't. Where'd you right. get the information from? Is right. really what I ask. Right. But I know suicide is up, right? And so mm -hmm. previously, every forty seconds, someone commits suicide around the around the world. So the last thing I want to do is ever be ever be something that contributes to someone's depression right. or mm -hmm. mental anguish, angst, or struggle. Correct. Right. So by right. creating these healthy boundaries. It's really interesting how we're actually supporting someone so they mm -hmm. can realize, like, wait a second, A, a boundary gives you value. Right. It yes. honors who you are. It does. Now, unfortunately, we live in a time where not everyone honors boundaries. Yeah. I think 
less more so. A hundred percent. And you know what? I, I I saw it on Facebook, so that it must be true. It must way. be true. You saw it on <laughs> Facebook. But it was a, it was an interesting meme. Did you, you Google it? Yeah. I, well, it's a, it, I did actually. It's, it's it's a saying that goes all over the place. Now, if you understood more about someone's background you would realize more about how they're projecting and be Absolutely. less offended by everything they say. Mm -hmm. The trouble with that or the challenge a child faces, even if they understand this intellectually, emotionally. It's well, we're talking about kids. I mean, right, they're adult, kids. Adults, so kids are, they, they, you know. As adults, we don't understand. Right, I don't understand exactly. it as an adult. Much less if I, if I'm six or seven, I would definitely not understand that. But biologically, biologically, kids can't understand because their brain is not fully developed. Yeah, right. the frontal lobe, the right? Yeah. Right. And the frontal lobe, which is the thinking, the the judgment, the reasoning. So biologically, they don't understand because I hear a lot of times. Well, every time I talk to my kid, they're like, "I don't know what you do. I don't." Yes, know. And the, the and "I don't know" is like the biggest answer. And I'm like, but they really don't know. So I don't know that I didn't know. I knew a lot of why I did what I did. I, what I didn't have was the language or the verbiage right, or the too. ability to that's express myself. I knew I felt incredibly alone. I knew I felt like I, there was something wrong and I didn't, I didn't know. I knew what the word depression was. I just didn't know what it meant me. I know right, what anxiety right. was, but I didn't know it meant me. Right. I didn't know that anxiety was just an irrational fear. I didn't know that my fear receptors were overreacting, releasing calcium. Right. I, didn't know, I didn't know that my, the lactic acid right, in my blood level was going the, Right, the physical aspect of it. Right, and that's what it. I mean by not knowing. You can't articulate it. But right. Language, so All I knew was I know, had this feeling gut, like I'm going to die. Right. Right. Your and, gut tells you. See, right. See, now, the great thing is I do believe that there is an answer. And I do believe there's help. So one of the things, and we're going to start getting into the constructive conclusions here. One of the things that's very important to the show, and correct me if I'm wrong, is we don't want people to go through something that they don't have to. Right. You know, like, an, like avoidable stressors. Right. A lot, of, a lot of the stressors in divorce are truly avoidable. The reason why Some we Some of them are. Some of them are. The reason why we run into them is because of things like pride, ego, mm -hmm. yes, unhealthy boundaries, rigid boundaries. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm right, you're wrong. Right. No way. I have to win. You have to lose. Right. It's not a win lose thing. So I read something yeah. about um equality, and they're like, if someone gets equal rights. It doesn't mean you're going to lose your equal rights. It's not a pie. Right. right. It's not sliced up. Everyone no. gets their share. So how do we how do we create that? Is is where we want to go. And I, I think that, you know, I, I I feel really good about this show today, guys. I got to yeah. Be I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I I cried and everything. But yes. I, I I think that um what we do is really important here. So I don't. I, so Teresa, my question to you is like. What what advice would you give someone? Because you know they're they're in the middle of this and this whole idea. I got to fight. I got to win. I gotta no, you need to keep your emotions in check. Okay, that's one of the biggest things. And our next guest will definitely explain that. Oh, absolutely. Oh, ooh, yeah. Is that that's Gene? That's Gene. I don't know if I could talk too much about that. That's a surprise. <laughs> that's a surprise. Uh, that's a surprise. So, Fred, what what what's your constructive conclusion for today's show? I would say, listen, we all need, you know, words are important and we need to not only be mindful of the words we use with other people, but we need to be mindful of the words we use with ourselves. Right. We typically tend to be more gentle with other people that are friends with us who are going through something and have a little different kind of advice to them than we do ourselves because yes. we're in that defensive, we're in that right. insecurity and to realize that, you know, we need to reflect that back and to self-care. And, you know, that could be five minutes a day, taking that breath. Because the tapes will play. That we, right. like, like you said, from our, um, our childhood. Mm -hmm. And we need to kind of like look at that and then un 
undo it, affirm ourselves. Right. And make sure that we have people around us who are affirming too, who are not blowing smoke off our back. Right. Who are, who are real with us, but who are affirming too. So we're going to fess up. If we feel that, we will be able to do that for our kids. Yes. So we're going to fess up when we mess up. Fess up when we mess Absolutely. up. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna secure appropriate boundaries. Absolutely. Yep. Keep our conversations age appropriate. Yes. Absolutely. And learn to be better to ourselves. Then, right? I mean, yeah, that's not gonna hurt you, is it? No. 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 We have this negative thing about this. Oh, you're being selfish. Oh my God, I can't do something for me. I can't say no because then I'm being selfish. That is actually a positive thing, can be. You, you know, know what there, I mean? And we have to realize that. There yeah. are people that, like, they want to fall on their sword. They're like, oh, I'm killing it, and I'm working all these hours, and I've been seeing this all over the internet. You know, overworking yourself and overdoing everything, and look what I'm doing, and look what I'm doing. That becomes ego. Yeah. That does. That's not, a, that's not about working for your family. That's you You pointing at everyone, look what I do. Right. And, and balance. We need to have balance. Mm -hmm. Balance is, well, balance equals stability, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and isn't that all a kid wants? Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and again, when we're talking about the kids, I can't stress enough that not only the age-appropriate language, but it's okay to be human in front of our kids. Right. It's okay to say, I don't know. Right. It's okay to say, I don't know, but I'll find okay the answer say, and right. I'll get back to you. I made a mistake. Right. Or I feel, or I think, instead of saying, you or you right. know, or so it really takes, you know, it it models for our kids. Imagine right the humility and the honor a child would feel or think if you said, "Hey, I was going to do this. What do you think about?" That? Right. Just their exactly yeah. inclusion. Just have them feel a part of. Not necessarily that you know what someone says you're going ultimately is what's going to happen. But just to feel, you know, we all want to feel included. We right. all give them right. the equity and the, give them the equity, equity in the relationship. Yeah, so. exactly. You know, funny thing you say that when I meet with my students, I say to them collectively and individually, and it kind of shocks them a little bit and shocks me that it shocks them. I said, I just want to say thank you for yeah. what you bring, bring to, to this journey that we've had or going through this semester. Yes, and, and like, you know what, Fran? What? We want to thank like, you. Yeah, you are the best. So we're, we're out of time, guys. and we're going to see you very soon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we just need everyone being healthy, and we'll, right. we'll talk about that in a little bit. Right. All right. So that Thanks is it, guys. and we will see you guys next time. Peace out. Peace.